All right, so welcome back. We had earlier discussed about the vision. So now we'll be talking about the due diligence in recruitment. So a few things that you need to know when you are recruiting, because recruitment is an important part of business. There are always a time when you need to fill a vacancy. And it's important to know that during recruitment, you're not just substituting people, someone who has just gone and you're replacing with another person. Right, what you are indeed changing is a function that is lost by the departure of the staff. Okay, so you're replacing the functions, or even if no one has gone and you're just starting, so you want to um, list out a set of functions that will help you achieve success. Right, and you look at the functions each person will play. Someone needs to play the security function, someone needs to play the um, accounting or the, the cash. Uh, keeping functions someone needs to play the managerial function someone needs to play the sales functions uh, someone may need to play the customer service functions okay so you list out all these functions and begin to look for in humans the competencies these various functions those who have these functions as their strengths you begin to look at these people whether they are black or white whether they are christian or muslim doesn't matter as long as they have the qualifications and they have you know the competencies to deliver on these functions that's what you're looking for that's what you mean by recruitment because when you recruit these people and onboard them you are bound to empower them to deliver top-notch value to your organization so that you can achieve your business goals so you can't just hire anybody and that's why you don't need to hire someone because they're your brother or sister or cousin or relatives or friends or friends child no even if you hire such a person the person has to prove that they have the competence for that function you're looking for right because they are going to be on your payroll because there's a chunk of the bread from that organization that goes to them. There is a piece of the cake that goes to them. So everybody needs to justify the process of generating that cake, okay? So you hire to fill a vacancy and not to fulfill righteousness. You're not hiring because I must hire, no, yeah? Sometimes you, you it will take, it will cost you something to get a recruitment officer, HR, human resource manager to do your recruitment. So it will cost you money. So why would you just hire someone you know, just for hiring sake. All right, so you need to fill roles and you need to ensure that there are no biases, okay? You need to erase sufficiently stereotypes and prejudices. You don't hire or, or refuse to hire someone because they are from a particular tribe. You have to place competence, ability to fill the role, you know, ahead of whatever prejudice, whatever um, religious or or, or, or tribal um, affiliations. And by doing that, you need to do what I call the background check. You need to find out on your own. You, you don't need to be in a hurry to recruit and make a mistake because you don't want the turnover of employees to be so high, you know, changing employees every now and then. And then, of course, for industries like the pharmaceutical industry, um, retail pharma, where you deal with patient records you don't want your patients you know giving their records to different people repeatedly they, they, they tend to lose confidence and then it also speaks ill about the organization an organization that keeps changing staff um, sometimes is seen by the external as um, having a poor work culture since people don't tend to last so you don't want to change in face uh, you, you you agree with me that it's practical when Customers say, ah, oh, no, don't change. Uh, I'm seeing new faces. Customers know those who attend to them, especially your choice customers. And one thing you want to do for your customers, if you care about them, is to have a consistent um, flow of persons who attend to them. All right? So, and of course, you have to bring in people who you can uh, um, train well enough to give you top value and people that you would want to retain, people who would share your ideals you know of your organization so you want to be you want to have your due diligence when recruiting so that you don't have to pay dearly for it it costs a whole lot to you know hire new staff the onboarding process sometimes you might 
in order to get what you want, even um, bargain for a higher remuneration just to get. Meanwhile, if you had managed your previous staff, you'd have gotten same value or even more for less. So you are very careful when you are recruiting. Number three, we look at the culture and values of the organization, right? So does your organization have culture and values? It's important that your organization has culture and values. So you want to say what are the acceptable behaviors in your organization, right? So what kind of mindset do you desire to prevail among your staff? You know, how do you want your um, organization now, your team members to think, to behave? What are the kind of values they hold dear to themselves, to all of you, all of you, right? What kind of things guide the way people behave, think, their attitude towards work? What kind of things do you prioritize? So, for instance, um, is where friendship is part of the core values, you see it, activities that you know team bonding activities happen once in a while okay to because we want our client our team members our staff to always free, be free with one another okay so um you look at where safety is a core value and culture in an organization you see periodic drills you see um hsc offices um, you see HSC codes, guides, rules, you know, that ensure that you don't do certain things. And you see checks and balances put in place to ensure that people don't injure themselves and people don't put things that will cause harm for their fellow workers, you know, put, like putting things on passageway or um, allowing naked wires to flow around. You know, these are things you do for safety. And of course, uh, maybe you have um, different ways of disposing um, shops and uh, combustibles and non-combustibles. You have this kind of different um, refuse bins, you know, in the organization. Yeah, that already tells everybody that, okay, so here we don't just dispose things carelessly. All right. Then you look at, um, say, for instance, where excellence is the key the key value you see that there are rewards for excellent performances periodically okay so the kind of values you place require we determine to a great extent some of the actions that will be taken even either punitive or incentives okay so what kind of mindset do you want to prevail in your workplace what kind of gist what do you want people to say about because of course the gist will always fly there will always be People outside will get to know about the things that, you know, happen in your organization somehow because those who work for you live outside. So when they go, um, with the culture of the workplace rubs off on them. And so people begin to even um, describe them according to some of the values they've imbibed in your workplace. And then people can now relate your success, the, the beauty of your organization to those values they see in people. And you see places, organizations, I've worked in organizations where friendship is a core, is a, is a core value. And you, you notice that everybody feels differently. Everybody feels happy. Everybody engages, you know, with one another. And then, you see, even leaving the organization, you, everybody becomes brother and sister automatically. These things are very, very good. And it also rubs off on the way you attend to your patients. Okay, so where customer service is a priority. You agree with me that customers, you see um, there are devices where customers can go and rate um, the services of an officer or the officers that attend to them. These things, are, you know, they already, the customer feels that confidence in the quality of service they are getting. So it automatically is there and the cost, it, it also has a way of making, attracting more people because people love where there are good vibes. So that way, it's important that it's, uh, it's, the culture and values are important because they bring customers closer. They, they make the, the, the staff remain in, in the organization. So are you conscious of your corporate image? What people feel, about, what people see in you, about you, how people describe you, what you look like to them. So you need to create a routine opportunity during meetings to have your team remind themselves of those core values. It's very important. 
And then, of course, like I said, you prioritize these values by creating punitive measures on infringement of these values. So people know how important these values are so that when you infringe on them, then you really get to be punished. And when you are addressing the matters, you address specifically those issues, all right? So that's it.